Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this press conference at the Palais des Nations in Geneva. We're pleased to have with us uh, here today the group of human rights experts on Nicaragua who are here to share with you the findings of their latest report. As you may know, the Human Rights Council established the group of experts in March of 2022 to investigate all alleged human rights violations and abuses committed in the country since April 2018. The group released their latest report today and presented their findings to the Human Rights Council in the session that just ended. Uh, we've also just put out a press release accompanied by the report to the uh, members of the media, so you should all have that by now. Um, and so here with us uh, in the middle uh, is the chair of the group of experts, uh, Jan uh, Simon, and uh, to his right, Angela Buitrago. Um, uh, so Mr. Simon will read an opening statement and then we'll open the floor to questions. Uh, please note that this press conference will be held exclusively in English. Um, if you have questions in Spanish, please contact us afterward and we'll be happy to arrange uh, for you to speak to the experts uh, directly. Um, now I pass the floor to Mr. Simon and then who will uh, deliver opening remarks and then we'll take your questions. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so serious, systematic, Human rights violations tend to amount to crimes against humanity, continue to be perpetrated in Nicaragua for political reasons by the government. President Ortega, uh, Vice President Murillo, and the high level state officials identified in the investigation should be held accountable uh, by the international community as should Nicaragua as a state that goes after its own people, targeting university students, indigenous people, people of African descent, campesinos, and members of the Catholic Church and other Christian denominations. Our report found that the persecution by the government uh, of Nicaragua of real or perceived opponents has become more refined since our last report. Uh, violations, uh, abuses and crimes have been perpetrated not only to dismantle active opposition efforts but they are also perpetrated to eliminate all critical voices and dissuade in the long term any new organization and initiative of social mobilization in the country. As the government has moved closer to its goal of total destruction of critical voices in the country, patterns of violence of the right to life, uh, security, integrity of the person are less prevalent today. And then instead, uh, in particular since 2023, there has been an exponential increase of patterns of violations focusing on incapacitating any kind of opposition at the long term. Nicaragua is caught in a spiral of violence worked by the persecution of all forms of political opposition, whether real or perceived, both domestically and abroad. In addition, the government has solidified a spiral of silence, incapacitating any potential opposition. The persecution extends beyond Nicaragua's borders, with Nicaraguans abroad facing deprivation of nationality and legal identity, lack of access to official documentation, and consular support, as well as other violations impeding family reunification and effective extent extensively conditions for earning a living abroad. 
Nicaraguan citizens have been left statelessness and devoid to access uh, to regal remedies. And many Nicaraguans are suffering from similar uh, conditions caused from statelessness. Family members of victims of human rights violations are themselves victimized by the government only for being related to real or perceived government opponents. These violations, by extension, are particularly serious when they affect children. Children have been subjected to violations due to their relationship with or activities and or opinions expressed by their parents or family members. Many children have been separated from parents who were expelled or banned from entering Nicaragua and some have been denied valid passports to join their parents. The report of uh, us also highlights the consolidation and centralization of all state powers in the hands of President Ortega and Vice President Murillo, particularly the total, uh, total control exerted over the judicial branch. Centralization of power not only ensures impunity for perpetrators, but also undermines efforts towards accountability. The government has ensured that it remains in an increasingly solid bubble to per 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 uh, per per perpetuate sorry, itself in power and annihilate anyone attempting to break that bubble. In this context, the amnesty law from 2019 further entrenches impunity by shielding serious human rights violations. These violations include extrajudicial executions, arbitrary detention, torture, and persecution. Such amnesty provisions are incompatible with Nicaragua's obligations under international human rights law, particularly under international uh, human rights law applying regarding the Convention Against Torture and other cruel, uh, inhumane, and degrading treatment or punishment. We call on the government to immediately release all persons arbitrarily deprived of their liberty, cease violations, abuses, and crimes, particularly persecution on politically motivated grounds, and undertake exhaustive, independent, and transparent investigations of documented violations, abuses, and crimes to hold perpetrators accountable. We urge the international community to take immediate action by expanding sanctions against individuals and institutions involved in human rights violations. Sanctions are a minimum form of accountability in a country where impunity and criminalizing democracy is the rule. We also call on the international community to make use of its findings that we have here presented today in the Council in security, financial and trade relations and policies, be it within the framework of the Financial Action Task Force, the International Monetary Fund, or when conditioning preferential access of Nicaragua to markets on compliance with non-trade political objectives. The effect on the Nicaraguan population is devastating and it will take the people of Nicaragua and the international community a significant amount of time and resources to recover everything lost under the rule of President Ortega and Vice President Morello. 
Thank you, Mr. Simon. Um, now we open the floor to questions. Uh, uh, first, we'll go to the room. If, we, if you have any questions, please uh, identify yourself and the media outlet that you work for. Um, we can go here in the front on the left. Uh, thank you. Um, Isabel Sacco uh, with EFE, the Spanish News Agency. Um, I would like to ask you about a visit yesterday by a Russian uh, high official um, uh, security official from Russia. And he visited yesterday Managua and he met there with President Ortega and other representatives from other countries like Venezuela, Cuba, um, and Bolivia. And I would like to know if because it's clear that uh, Russia seeks to have a greater influence in the region. So do you, f do you, f do you think uh, that um, this can co um, increase the sense of confidence uh, of the government uh, and increase um, its sense of uh, impunity because he, it, he feels that he is uh, protected by a big power? Our mandate uh, is related to the human rights situation in, in Nicaragua, and uh, this is uh, what we are mandated to investigate. If there are any relations regarding violations in the country um, with other states and or other states supporting the lack of accountability and impunity actively in the country, um, this would be a very serious case. As to now, we do not have enough information uh, that would make us to conclude that there are other countries involved in perpetuating the human rights situation in the country, nor do we have enough information on countries uh, that would support uh, perpetuating impunity. Um, it would be a matter of concern, certainly, for our mandate to address these questions um, if we would have substantive information on this, but uh, up to today, uh, we do not have it. Thank you. Um, any more questions from the room? Yes, okay. Uh, Jamie Keaton uh, from Associated Press. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Um, what is the solution for Nicaragua? Like, what uh, does, does, Mr. Or, does President Ortega have to leave power for the country to, uh, to, to, to see uh, an end to all these uh, rights violations that you're talking about? That the government of Nicaragua ceases to violate uh, the ongoing uh, human rights violations um, is addressed by our recommendations in order to get some leverage of the international community to make uh, Nicaragua um, get back to the path of uh, rule of law and the respect for human rights. And we have reached out at the beginning of our mandate to the government in order to establish a dialogue. It wasn't possible. Uh, so do have other actors, be it within multilateral organizations on a bilateral level. At present, we are convinced that only joint efforts in the international community, and in particular, were leveraged by multilateral agencies can be used in order to make the government rethink um, what they're doing uh, is one of the options that you have. Whether this at the midterm will work out, we will see, but we have first to try it. And in particular, 
Uh, this is addressed literally in our report. The role of the International Monetary Fund in this is crucial. It cannot be uh, like in the last two reports uh, of uh, the International Monetary Fund regarding uh, governance issues on the use of IMF funds linked in particular to questions of the rule of law uh, is addressed in the way that it has addressed uh, in the last two reports. So they must take serious action in order to evaluate the situation related to uh, their mandate under Article 4 and make uh, the Nicaraguan government um, comply with standards uh, they should stick in order to get funds from the fund. The same applies, and this we have also addressed, uh, as to compliance uh, with uh, non-trade political objectives in accessing and getting a preferential access to markets. So this is, I've, at present, what we think is uh, one way to put some leverage on the government. Um, within the country, uh, one of our main conclusion is that there is literally no civic space anymore, no opposition anymore. Um, the only thing you can do is from outside. From outside. Okay, um, thank you. Um, we'll take another question uh, here. On, on that question is, um, and what exactly um, the IMF can, exactly what concretely, what uh, do you call them to, to do? Um, to cut funds, to, to put uh, um, conditions, um, exactly to, to help the good government governance in, in Nicaragua. And also, excuse me, and on the trade issue also, the fact that the, 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 fact that the, the country can export at uh, preferential tariffs uh, to, to many countries. Um, uh, could you exactly um, be, uh, uh, give us more details on what, exact, what countries do you think are the major, uh, are the major um, trade partners of Nicaragua and uh, the United States, Europe, who are you asking to, to, to do something in, in trade terms? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your interesting question. Like the, uh, I will begin with the second one. Uh, the main trade partners uh, are the U.S. and the European market. Uh, regarding uh, the U.S., uh, the CAFTA agreement uh, has uh, uh, conditions on the human rights and rule of law situation in countries that should be enforced. Our reports uh, are clear evidence uh, that uh, the country doesn't comply with uh, the so-called non-trade political objectives uh, in uh, the relations uh, on accessing uh, markets. And the same applies to the European Union. Um, I don't know whether you're familiar to the issue, but there is and has been in the past uh, issues regarding the free trade agreement between the European Union and Central America, where Nicaragua is part of it. Uh, the free trade pillar of the agreement had been provisionally applied to commercial relations without applying uh, the human rights standards are also part of the convention, and the only reason why they weren't applied is that the convention wasn't in force. Now, having Valoni uh, finally agreeing on the ratification of a free trade agreement between Central America and uh, the European Union, the whole uh, convention uh, will get into force. And when this is the case, then you will have the NTPOs uh, applied directly to commercial relations uh, with Central America, in particular Nicaragua. And there, again, uh, our findings are the ones that should be then applied when uh, the Commission 
will assess NTPOs in the agreement with Nicaragua. And uh, the, the consequences of not complying with these conditions is uh, finally to suspend uh, a country uh, from uh, the beneficence of the free trade agreement. And as to the International Monetary Fund Article 4 uh, consultations between member con uh, states and the IMF um, have hard conditions uh, on assessing uh, issues that are related to, to governance. And uh, one of the hardest issues that you have there is the rule of law and uh, the situation uh, that are related to the rule of law. We have come to the conclusion of total impunity and complete destruction of the justice system. So if this is not an issue to be assessed by IMF uh, under uh, their Article 4 consultations, I don't know what uh, are the conditions that they are addressing there. And if you get a bit closer, and I invite you uh, as a journalist to look closer to these reports, and in particular the last report that has been approved by the directorate of the IMF, you will find a clear um, difference between their assessment and our assessment of the justice system. And if this is the case, uh, and they would take seriously our uh, conclusions, um, this definitely conditions funds of the International Monetary Fund. So if you do not comply with this, you are at risk at losing finances from the International Monetary Fund. And there's one issue uh, that was not addressed by you, but uh, uh, <laughs> I will take it up. It is related to money laundering and uh, recommendation eight of the International Financial Action Task Force that relates to legislation on controlling money laundering uh, when handled or when assets are handled by non-governmental organizations. Precisely these uh, rules have been used in order to annihilate more than 3,000 organizations of the, social, uh, of the civil society. So we invite uh, the FATF and the member states of the FATF who sit in the directorate to take seriously uh, our analysis in this regard and to do no harm. And in addition to this, Nicaragua is one of the few countries that has recently been uh, released from the gray list of the FATF. So one might wonder uh, what informed the decision of the FATF in having Nicaragua getting out of the gray list, given the situation of lack of transparency and rule of law in the country. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Uh, do we have any more questions from the room? Another one from uh, Associated Press? Thank you. Uh, sorry to uh, monopolize it. It looks like uh, the Isabel and Jamie show today. Um, I just had a quick question about uh, uh, you mentioned IMF and the United States and trade partners. Um, one of the common refrains that we've heard out of um, Nicaragua from the government for years has been the influence of the United States um, in the country. Um, and I just was wondering, um, what do you make of the claims that the United States may have tried to orchestrate the coup in 2018? And what has been the fallout for that? Is, is this scapegoating in the United States? Is there any validity to it in your view? And, and what has been the impact of that on human rights? Thank Once again, um, thank you for your question. We address a human rights situation in the country, and if there is no direct link to this, uh, we would not have an opinion on this. Um, as to the question of the colleague regarding Russia, um, if there is a link uh, that could be traced directly to the human rights situation, we would be happy to dig a bit deeper into this, but uh, as up to now, we do not have enough information regarding this. 
Okay, any more uh, questions from the room? Uh, anybody online? Going once, going twice. Okay, we have one question from uh, uh, Gabriella. Uh, please go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Gabriella. We'll come to you, Maria, in a second. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, if international community stays still, what is the perspective for uh, Nicaragua? What can you see? And if you have any evidence of uh, Mr. Ortega involved in narco activities, uh, drug related crimes or something like that. Thank you very much. According to the final declaration within the UN on the responsibility to protect, uh, it is up to the international community once a body of the UN or somebody or somebody mandated like us uh, to investigate serious human rights violations and comes to the conclusions of crimes under international law to step up their efforts to make members of the international community who commit this kind of crimes and violations of international law to stop this. And there are several means to do this. One of the means I have addressed is a multilateral financial architecture uh, of the international community, and there are other means to do this. You can also enforce human rights through extending your jurisdiction in terms of criminal responsibility, uh, and you can hold a state under the concept of state responsibility accountable uh, if there is a jurisdiction in The Hague for these violations. So it is up to the com international community to take steps and initiatives in order to take seriously their compromise on the responsibility to protect. Now, uh, once again, uh, related to our mandate, we are uh, mandated to investigate human rights violations and uh, if there would be a link to so-called Palermo crime activities as related to drug trafficking and other things, uh, we would address this if there would be a direct link, but as to up to now, we do not have enough information on this in order to respond to your question. Thank you. Um, we'll take another call. Uh, sorry, another question online. Sorry, apologies, Maria Alejandra. I, we uh, skipped you. If you could just identify the outlet that you work for, um, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, Maria Alejandra Listegueta from El Nacional Venezuela. Um, I wanted to uh, pose a question regarding the, um, the, the way that apparently financial institutions are behaving in a complacent way and uh, trade partners, uh, Nicaraguan trade partners, that is uh, US and the EU. And I was wondering if, um, if uh, Mr. Simon could tell us a bit what how how would you see this uh, them pulling out of the country and if this would not uh push nicaragua for to further alliances with uh, russia china and uh, other countries the uh, autocratic countries so uh would this not have a backlash that would be um that would entail uh, an even worse uh, worsen the situation um thank you very much Uh, there's always a bubble effect uh, that you would find in terms of sanctions and in terms of, uh, though this is not a sanction of conditioning, for example, financing. And it is uh, up to the actors then to balance out uh, what uh, is more promising in order to lead to the 
overall objective that is to make the government change their conduct in terms of uh, violating human rights. Um, the international financial system is very complex and the sources of income of countries are very complex in order to give you here an answer uh, that might be reasonable in order to come to one or another conclusion. Uh, I think it is up to uh, the different actors that have the leverage in direct votes in the directorate of multinational institutions to coordinate uh, in a way that is reasonable in order to have um, some leverage in this regard. So uh, definitely difficult to answer these questions uh, at the one shot here, so I would leave it like that. Okay, thank you. Um, any more questions from the room or online? Okay, I don't see any, so that brings us to the end of this press conference. Um, thank you very much for joining us, and thank you all uh, for being here. Uh, have a good day.